Claudia Collins joins us as always recruiting Roundup. You would think that this would be a quiet period for her, anything but. There's a lot of stuff that has happened here over the last three weeks. A couple quarterback news and notes, ASU commitment. Claudia, take it away. Yeah, it was anything but boring, we'll call it, especially when we look at the top two 2024 quarterbacks in Arizona. We had one commit and one decommit. So starting with Damon Williams Jr., he committed to Ole Miss. And I've got to say 2022 is probably a year he's always going to remember, especially if you look at December. I mean, he wins the Open Division state title and then commits to Ole Miss. He was looking for somewhere where he could go and compete right away, but with a high level of competition. And he said that's what stood out about Ole Miss and being in the SEC West in that tough level competition. And they liked him too, that's for sure. Definitely the first time I went down there, it caught me a little bit off guard. I've never been to that Oxford area, but I actually like like the uh, like the smaller city life and, and how everything's kind of closer together. I think it fits me. I think that they say that they like the way that I can like manage the game with my arm and my legs. And I feel like I can be a true dual threat to where I can hurt you in both ways. And then just like straight football IQ, just knowing where to put the ball and when to do it. Yeah, Lane Kiffin gets himself a very talented player there, Claudia. But I'm curious, you know, he had to have other schools banging on the door. Why get it out of the way so early, one? Two, who were some of the other contenders, if you know? Okay, tons of other contenders. We're talking two dozen offers and lands on Ole Miss. ASU and U of A were in his top 10 that he released in October, but it was all about committing early for him all along. Ever since I started talking to him when I went into this role, he said he wanted to commit early because he thinks it's important for quarterbacks, can build a class that he firmly knows, and then focus on his senior season. So that's his reason for committing in 2022. All right, so Dylan Riola over at Chandler had committed to Ohio State, but there was news on that front over the break. Yeah, it doesn't feel like so long ago. It was in May that we were talking about Dylan committing to Ohio State. That's the number one prospect in the entire class of 2024 across the nation. He decommitted from Ohio State, which there was some talk that that might happen. I didn't get a hold of him. Uh, he was on vacation, which as you should be when you're in high school and you're a student. But I have to think that Nebraska is a top contender. His dad played at Nebraska and his uncle is an O-line coach at Nebraska. So I don't think it's far fetched to think they're going to come after him pretty hard with those family ties. He had an impressive junior season. He threw for 2,435 yards, 22 touchdowns with five interceptions. However, it's his sophomore season back in Texas that really sticks out. It was a little more impressive. Threw for 3,341 yards with 32 touchdowns and five interceptions. I'm really excited to see what this senior season does for him. Uh, when we were talking with Zach Alvira in the mix before the break, he did want to throw some credit at him. Like this is a new school, a new program. Chandler plays tough football. And I have to agree with Zach. And I, I'm very excited to see what Dylan does in his senior year. Okay, so the late signing period is February 1st. A few weeks away, Claudia's world's going to get turned upside down because it feels like Claudia... <laughs> We didn't have a lot of the high school kids that committed this year in the early period. There were there were some for sure, but there's a lot that had to sit on the sidelines that weren't able to sign or didn't choose to sign. They weren't even the biggest names. It's just they were passed over because of transfer portal. And I think a lot of kids are now scrambling to figure it out. Arizona State did get one on their special teams side over the weekend. Talk about that. Yeah, Karsten Kiefer, that was our Luis and Dejas kicker of the year. He's also known as Legatron over at Corona del Sol. Really impressive kicker. He was 43 for 43 on PATs and made first team all central. ASU, Tulane, and UNLV are schools he had offers from, but he told me all along that ASU has been his dream school since the beginning, being right around the corner from there. He has a lot of family ties to ASU. His mom was on the dance line at ASU and has a lot of extended family members that are former Sun Devils. And he says that his family bleeds maroon and gold. So I think that tells you ASU was probably gonna be his best bet all along. He loves the staff that Kenny Dillingham has put together. He's had conversations with Charlie Ragel more recently, loves him, and he loves Sean Aguano and had wonderful things to say about him. Uh, but once he saw players go into the transfer portal, that's when he was like, hey, this is my opening. It's time for me to commit and make sure I have a chance at competing early on. It's interesting on that one is Jace 
Feely, Jay Feely's son, went to Gilbert Christian, was at Arizona State, was a kicker at Arizona State, went in the portal a few weeks back. And over the weekend, he signed with Deion Sanders at Colorado. He leaves, a local kid leaves. Another local kid steps in. It's really interesting to see how this all plays out. Claudia Collins, the recruiting roundup, week in and week out, brought to you by IBEW 640. Good job there, Claudia. See you next week.